Hi, my name is Anne Hermanstead, and I'm a graduate student in physics at UCSB. And this quarter, I'm teaching a course called Surfing the Waves of Light and Matter, the Fundamentals of Quantum Mechanics. So quantum mechanics is a description of how really, really small things behave. Things like electrons and atoms that we can't see in our everyday lives. But even though we can't see them, they're everywhere around us. And the effects of quantum mechanics come up all the time in the devices that we use. So for example, our computers, USB flash drives, your iPods or your iPhones, microscopes, lasers, all of these things rely on quantum mechanics. But quantum mechanics is bigger than this. It dates back to the beginning of the universe. So after the, after the Big Bang, when the universe was first formed, everything was tiny and everything was governed by quantum mechanics. And now that the universe has expanded to be this enormous thing around us, we use quantum mechanics to understand what goes on at the very depths of black holes. So what is going on? What's going on with these tiny particles that's so interesting that we want to study? So to answer this question, I want you guys to imagine shrinking down to the size of an atom. Now an atom is about a million times smaller than a grain of sand. So imagine shrinking down to a million times smaller than a grain of sand and enter what we call the quantum world. Now in the quantum world, everything looks completely different. Right? Things behave really differently than what we would expect and what we would see in our everyday lives. So let me just give you some idea of what I'm talking about. In the quantum world, particles can actually teleport. They can walk right through walls. So if I were to throw an electron at a wall, I would expect it to bounce right off. But when I do this, I see that there's some probability represented by this red pie piece here that the electron does bounce off like, like I'd expect. But there's also some probability that the electron travels right through the wall. Now this is crazy. This is like me saying if I were to walk over to the wall behind me, I would expect to just pass right through and appear on the other side. And I know that this doesn't happen when I try and walk through that wall. But in the world of quantum mechanics, this happens all the time. So what else? Particles can travel through walls. What else can they do? It turns out that we can create particles out of thin air as long as they disappear quickly enough. So in order to create particles, we need energy. And if we're creating particles out of thin air, we need to borrow this energy from the universe. So we can borrow enough energy to create a particle and an antiparticle, but they can only live for a very short amount of time, and then they disappear. We have to give all that energy back. So this is like borrowing a dollar from your friend. Your friend will likely loan you the dollar, and it might be all right if you don't return it for a couple days. But if you go to your dad and you ask to borrow his Corvette, he might say, yes, but you can only borrow it for 15 minutes. You can drive it around the block, and then you have to bring it right back. So you can borrow this really big, really cool thing, but you can only borrow it for a short amount of time. And the same is true in quantum mechanics. We can borrow huge amounts of energy, but we can only borrow them for short amount of time, short amounts of time. So we could borrow enough energy to create a Corvette, anti-Corvette pair, but it has to disappear immediately and we have to give all that energy back. So I'm not sure if you guys caught that, so I'll go back through. But we could actually create, we could borrow enough energy to create a full Corvette and a full anti-Corvette. And they drive for a split second, and then they have to disappear, and we have to return all that energy back to the universe. All right, so particles can walk through walls. We can create particles out of thin air. And we can also create particles that can somehow read each other's minds, so that when one particle does something, it instantaneously affects the other particle. So I want you guys to give you an example. Let's say I have two quarters. Right? And these quarters are created out of the exact same material. And when I touch them together, they somehow share some information. Now I'm going to take these quarters and put them in two separate boxes. So I know that if I shake up one box and I look inside it, I have a 50-50 chance of seeing heads and a 50-50 chance of seeing tails. And I never know what I'm going to get. And the same is true of this box. Now if I shake them both up right, and I open up one box, and I see heads. I know immediately that the other box has tails, and I don't even have to look at it. So even though these are two separate boxes, and we would think that they have two independent probabilities, what happens in one box instantaneously affects the other box. And I'm so certain of this that I never have to even open the other box to know exactly what's going on. 
All right, so I've shown you guys some pretty crazy things, right? Particles can walk through walls, they can appear out of thin air, and they can somehow read each other's minds. Right? But as crazy as these things seem, they happen all the time in the quantum world. And we actually have a description for this. And that description is quantum mechanics. So in this course, we're going to use quantum mechanics to understand and describe all of the phenomena that I've shown you and more. I've only shown you a small piece of what goes on in the quantum world. So what about waves? I promised you guys in the title of the course that this would have something to do with waves. So here is a picture of a collection of atoms and an electron. And you can see that it looks something like what we'd expect to see if we threw a stone in a pond. Right? We see the same sort of ripple effect here. So somehow, waves have something to do with what goes on in this quantum world. So if you guys have ever been surfing, or even if you've just sat on the beach and watched the ocean waves, you have some intuition for what's going on with waves. And we're going to build on this intuition and use it to understand all of this, this crazy phenomena that I've just shown you. So I hope that you'll consider taking this course. Again, my name is Anne Hermansted, and the course is titled Surfing the Waves of Light and Matter, the Fundamentals of Quantum Mechanics.